Hey everybody, Mac here. I wanted to have a video to accompany a post I'm going to release tomorrow on how testing gives me confidence. A lot of this sample is in there, will just kind of be the final version of the test, but I thought it'd be nice to be able to see the progress of how I wrote those tests. So going from no tests to the test to refactoring. And of course the blog post is a short way to cover all that, but instead of writing another 30-minute uh, read time guide, I thought I would have the post and video be separate. So let's get into it by kind of exploring the feature here. And what we're after is this rerun section in the code here. So what I want to focus on is the ability to rerun a shift. And I like this feature in shift because basically it prevents a lot of support requests coming in when someone makes a very simple error when they're running their shift, often related to a typo in the branch name, or maybe they work on multiple projects and they forgot to switch between the different Git services. So this provides them a way from the dashboard to rerun those, whereas previously I was kind of accepting the support email and having to rerun it myself manually. So not only was that a poor experience for the user, but it also kind of took my time. So uh, I've generated a test here, just kind of starting from zero, to basically test this method. And there's some things about this code, while it's not necessarily too long, that I don't really like. So it's about 30 lines, but there's some nesting here, um, deeper nesting, especially here, uh, that just kind of makes the code not as simple as it probably could be. Uh, some things I talk about in base code, you know, nested code, big blocks, and so forth. So there's just ways to break this up that I want to implement. But because this is... Um, such a used service and a used feature, I want to be more confident uh, before I go changing this code. So I know it works now, uh, but I don't necessarily have any tests to prove that. I just kind of have a gut feeling based on it being in production for, you know, the last few years. Uh, so it kind of makes me a little nervous to touch it, though, because it is such an important feature. So I want to write some tests around this to make sure I have that confidence that this is not only behaving the way I expect, but more importantly, when I go and implement some of these changes here in a minute that I talk about in that blog post, um, I'm not breaking anything. I'm, I'm doing a true refactor where I'm just changing the code and improving it to be more maintainable, more readable, but I'm not changing the behavior, right? That's a true refactor by definition. So let's get started here. Uh, we basically have this rerun request, and I just want to go look at that in the routes, just to kind of understand how I'm going to craft this HTTP test. So I'm pretty sure in here somewhere there's a rerun. Here it is. Um, there's no name on this necessarily. Uh, so when we post to order store. This is the one I want. So it's order, rerun, and then the order itself. So let's let's go ahead and actually add a name here. This is something I can test as well. So let's just call this uh, order. Whoops, order dot rerun. Cool. And that's just going to make testing a little easier, so I don't have to remember that. So this is a post request. We saw that. So let's go ahead and change this to post. And we can use that naming convention. So I can say route uh, order dot rerun, and I'm going to have to pass it some kind of order here. And we'll be able to generate that in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize it with a null value. Let's finish building out this request first. I also know that this requires an authorized user. So I'm going to want to set that up as well. So I'm going to say acting as user. And again, I'll need to create one of these. So I'm going to initialize this with a null value. And I think that should be pretty good with the request, although I'm probably going to need to pass some data in. And I can kind of lift that off the form request here. So I'm going to need a connection ID, a repository, which is a special um, string uh, format, and then the source branch. So let's just actually copy that. And I'll drop this in here. And we'll just change these values to basically be the connection ID. And again, I don't have one of these. So all this is just kind of letting me know all the things I'm going to need to fake out in the database. Uh, I'm also going to need a repository string. So this should probably match the repository I'm going to do on the order. So let's set that up to be the order repository. 
and then finally the source branch which is the same thing this will just come from the source branch so I'm not necessarily worried about changing the data here this is a little bit more about making sure I'm sending the correct data so it is a valid request I'm not going to focus on validation necessarily for this test I just want to focus on the happy path the path where the code runs as I expect without any exceptional behavior meaning the data is valid it's the correct users they're able to rerun it uh, I don't have any errors from this GitLab connection. There's obviously not any order save issues. There's no Bitbucket stuff that needs to happen. It just dispatches the jobs and redirects me to the account dashboard. So that's what I want to check. So in doing so, we can say that it uh, assert redirect. And in this case, I want to go to the account dashboard. And I also am going to want to make sure that it uh, dispatched a shift properly. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to fake out the job queue. So Laravel provides a way to do that with the queue uh, facade, and we can say fake. And in this case, it gives us back a new fake facade, which we're able to perform assertions on. So I just want to hold this over here as our queue. And down here, I'll be able to do uh, some things with it. So in this case, I can say something like uh, Q, uh, assert, uh, pushed, and in this case, I want to assert that the uh, perform uh, shift job was the one that was dispatched. And I believe I can also do some callback information here. This ensures that that was pushed, uh, but with also the appropriate data. In this case, I want to make sure that it is that order. So let's just make a little callback here. So we'll just say function. And I believe this accepts the arguments that are passed in. So we can just say order here. And I will want to say something like, um, well, let's see. I better call that argument. And here we'll say something along the lines of return, uh, whether or not the argument uh, was correct. So I want to say something like um, order or argument uh, is the order. And let's bring that in. And what this is going to do is this is just a shorthand. This model reference, I'm not getting auto completion with PHP Storm right now, but effectively, if I brought this in as a model, just to kind of hack this for a second, we can see that this is method determines if two models uh, are basically equal, right? Are they the same? And it just matches the primary key, the table, and the connection name to ensure that they're uh, correct. So it's just a little shorthand. Let me back this off. Basically, it would be the equivalent of saying something a little more robust than this. So it's close enough to this, so it's basically saying, hey, these these were the same order IDs that were passed in. Uh, it's just a little bit more strict because it also goes on to test the table and connection. So again, since I know I have the models at hand, I'll just go ahead and use that little is helper. So I think as far as an assertion standpoint, this feels pretty strong. I'm redirecting that I sent to the account. Uh, I redirect that the uh, shift has been dispatched. I can also uh, assert that the order was updated with the correct information. So let's just do that last. So what I'll do is I have a stale copy of the order that I'm going to create. I can refresh uh, that order and effectively check these things on here to make sure that they are correct. So I can just do something like uh, some simple PHP unit assertions here. So PHP uh, this assert uh, same. I like to use assert same when possible because it's just it's a strict equality instead of assert equals, which is a you know loose equality check. There's some type juggling that can happen. So I just want to make sure all this is correct. So what I'll do is I'll assert same that that connection ID that I passed in uh, is the connection ID of that order. So we'll say connection ID. And we'll do this uh, a few more times for these other bits of information. So let's say also that the repository, whoops, repository, repository matches. So in this case, I'm not changing this. So it's a little bit strange to do this test. So you know what? I may end up testing 
uh, that a bit more. So let's do this. Let's just call that repository. And we'll change this to repository. And let's also change this to be the branch. And I will pull that off and we'll change this to source branch. And then finally, this rerun at, I want to assert that it's now. So this will be a little bit interesting. What we're going to need to do here is test that carbon, uh, that carbon now date is correct. So as a way to do this, you can just say uh, carbon and we can say uh, test, set test now to be equal to some kind of variable. In this case, we just want to call something now. And it doesn't really matter what that is, so I'm just going to use faker to make a date time. And that's what carbon now's date is going to be, which therefore will be what the rerun is going to be. So let's go ahead and get carbon in here. We're going to do a use uh, with faker. Whoops. With faker. That's what I want. And you know what? I know I'm going to do the refresh database as well, so let's go ahead and pull that in while we're here. Okay, so finally, uh, now that I have that, I can say this faker date time. And I don't ha need any specific time. I'm just going to allow it to give me a fake one at some point in the last, you know, 30 years, I think is the way that that works. Uh, so we have that. We're missing the repository. Let's, whoops, I don't want to create a parameter. I want to initialize that with a value. Same with this. And let's pull these up to where we're kind of setting all of this data. So in this case, I'm just going to set a repository to some kind of like a shift a test repository. That looks good enough to me. And we'll use faker here and just create some kind of crazy word. Uh, just let it pick some kind of random word. And again, I like you know, setting this data to be something a, a little bit arbitrary, a little bit random, just because it, it gives me, you know, a quick way to just have some test variance with the data. So it's all pretty nice and simple uh, to do. So I'm not going to get too crazy with test variance, but when it's easy enough to use Faker that way, why not? So, all right, that should take care of that. Let's go back uh, and we have all the assertions I think that we would want now. We're testing that the order updated correctly, it was dispatched to the queue, and we were properly redirected. There's nothing else that really happens here that I care about for the moment. Uh, so let's move on and let's go back and backfill this other stuff. So let me just tighten this up so it's a bit, or, a bit grouped. So I like kind of having my factory data and then any fake data, and then any setup with queues or so forth, uh, where I fake out some things, and then the actual response. So in testing, a lot of people call this a range. Uh, all that's up here, and then we have the act, and then we have the assert. And that's kind of the triple A's of testing there. So let's finish this out. Uh, let's do a factory for the order uh, class. And we're just going to create one of those. And this will need to be the users. So I'm going to have to change that around just a little bit. So let's make sure that the user ID here is the user that I'm going to create. Uh, so let's say user ID. However, uh, a lot of times I'll set up my, whoops, that's not the factory. Let's go to the factory. So order factory. A lot of times when I make a factory, I'll actually end up creating the necessary bits of data for uh, its other pieces. So that way I can just call order factory and I get everything. I would get a user uh, that's generated. I would get the product and the connection ID that was set uh, as well. So in this case, I actually don't care about what type of user is connected. So I can just rely on the order to uh, properly um, create the user. And it's actually going to create the connection as well, which is kind of interesting. So let's just pull all that off and we won't need to actually make those. Instead, I can just say order user. And here I can say order connection ID. So I'm not necessarily going to attempt to change the connection ID. So let's actually try to run this and kind of see, uh, whoops, let's fix this. Thank you, PHP Storm. Uh, so let's run this and actually kind of see this, um, you know, either pass or fail, see kind of where we are. So let's do PHP unit 
and this is going to be a feature test. I'm just going to limit to this particular test, HTTP controllers, uh, the order controller test. And when we run this, we get a failure. Uh, it's actually not redirecting uh, the way I expect. So probably just something that was missed here. So let's turn on the exception output or actually said another way, let's disable the exception handling. Okay, upon doing the without error exception, it looks like I'm getting some kind of sporadic errors that are happening. So sometimes it's complaining about this date time copy, and other times it's complaining about different uh, things. So in this case, the 401 unauthorized, so I'll get that same error as I got before. Uh, we'll get this copy. If I keep hitting this enough though, I'll actually see some other things about like a 401 unauthorized. So it's kind of interesting that it's uh, hitting around. So I think I know what the issue is. So first of all, a this is not a carbon instance. So that was actually a mistake here. Uh, that's the date time copy issue. Uh, so I can't actually use faker here. I need to actually use uh, a carbon date here. So I'll just use now. Uh, it's no big deal. Uh, so I'll just get rid of some of that variance. Again, I like to do the variance when it's simple, but if it's going to cause uh, some issues, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So that should probably remove our main issue here of copy. So now I'm getting that 401 unauthorized that I was seeing every now and then. And other times I just get what we saw before, this redirection. So what's happening now is actually this here about the order being rerun. If we look a little deeper, uh, it's not just that the ran twice is set. This actually has to be a status of hold. So when I go and look at my order factory, the status is actually a random selection of one of these statuses. I need it to actually be status hold to make that work. And I actually made a state for this before that I'm probably using in another test. So let's leverage that. So I'll actually say something like uh, this state and I'll say held. And that should get us a little farther down the rabbit hole. Cool, now we have a undefined method on app perform shift is. And I know what this is, this is actually because the first argument is the job itself and the second argument is the set of arguments. So let's actually DD this out just to see a little bit better on what those are. And we've got an error, oh that's the 401 unauthorized, we'll have to look at that next. So it's actually trying to go to GitLab, that might be something else we want to fix, so let's fix that as well. Um, let's go into our order factory and instead of, again, making this connection, just a random connection which could be uh, GitLab, which is going to trigger this bit of the code, let's avoid that by also uh, setting this up as well. So I'm gonna leave that here for now, and we will need to make our own connection here. So let's do this. Uh, connection is factory, connection, and in this case, we're gonna make a connection class and let's just go look at that connection factory. Anything fancy in here? Uh, yes, so the service will need to sp uh, specifically be one of these services. In this case, we don't want it to be GitLab. So let's go ahead and set that up and we'll do create. And like we said, we want the service, 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 <laughs> to be uh, GitLab. So we saw that before uh, in our factory. Where'd that go? There it is. Let's pull this out. We'll just do a GitHub. So anything but uh, GitLab should be fine, just to make sure we don't trigger this particular path. Again, the goal here is to test the happy path. We're going to test that particular path next. And of course, now I'm going to want to use this connection that I created instead of allowing the factory to create its own. So here we can say connection ID, and we will go back. Let's bring this in. This is the app models connection. That should make PHP Storm happy. And now instead of this order connection 
a bit, we should be able to change this. Let's just get all those set up and we'll swap that out. Cool. And finally, we don't have a connection ID. So basically, this one actually needed to stay order connection ID. So we want to make sure that the order connection ID didn't change here. It's still the connection ID that we passed across. So let's run this again. And now we're getting null because there are no arguments. So this is actually something in Laravel that I forget about every now and then. Some of these callbacks take the arguments. Some of them don't. Uh, so in this case, it just gets a reference to the job. Uh, so what that means, if we go look at this perform shift, uh, I can leverage that order directly off of the job itself. So in this case, I won't do that. I'll say job order. Uh, and I can also type in this to just make PHP Storm a little bit happier. So now we can see that there it is. Everything should be lining up now. So let's go ahead and run this again. And we get an error. Uh, model is should not be called statically. That's fine. My mistake. Uh, we'll call it directly there. And now we get failed asserting that one is identical to one on order controller test line 59. So what's wrong here? So the connection IDs don't match up the same. I've seen this before without casting. This is actually something I talked about at LayerCon. So for now, I'm going to back some of these off. Uh, to be equal, whoops, equals, let's run this again. So failed asserting that null is identical to an object of class carbon. So this rerun at is wrong. It's not rerun, it's rerun at. And now we failed asserting that two variables reference the same object. That's fine. We'll just change this back to equals again. And we have a little bit of a problem here. It looks like these aren't the same anymore. Why is that? So we have this carbons now. We're storing that and we're setting up carbon to be the test of now. All right, so it seems like there's something a little tricky going on here. So what I'm going to do is go back to setting this to be some kind of carbon uh, instance itself. So I'm just going to parse uh, a fake um, date time like we were before and just wrap it in a carbon instance. And OK, when I run this, it all works. I'm not exactly sure why the millisecond time was off there. I'll do some research on that separately, but I don't want to get hung up. Uh, again, I think it's just an issue there. Something maybe with the cyclic nature of using now, and then it was setting it to now down here. Again, not too sure why that would be a problem, but something seems to be happening uh, with that. So anyways, uh, everything is passing now. So I feel like the happy path is pretty good. So let me just do a couple quick things here. I just want to tidy this up and follow the kind of the Laravel testing convention and say something like rerun uh, updates order and puts um, job on queue. And let's just say adds shift. Add shit. <laughs> Let's just say add shit to Q. Uh, okay, so rerun uh, updates order and adds uh, shift to Q. There we go. Okay, so that feels pretty good. So that's our happy path. Now what I want to do is kind of drive out some of these negative paths. So let's just quickly get this. Um, I just kind of like to do this and work top down. So uh, this actually does a verification uh, based on the auth user. If you're the same as the order, so that should be pretty easy to test. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over that one. I'm going to focus a little bit more on this rerun because that's specific to the code here. That's a very custom check, whereas this is performed elsewhere in the application. And I know I can pretty much just go copy and paste uh, this test. So I'm not going to focus on that too much right now. Instead, let's focus on kind of this next path. So again, just kind of working top down here to get out and draw out some of those exceptional behaviors uh, until we get basically down to here. And then I'm going to use uh, that opportunity to kind of jump into the refactor mode. So again, armed with this test, we can kind of start moving a little bit more quickly now. Let's get into this can rerun. Uh, so I'm just going to copy kind of what we have here, the happy path. 
again in the interest of time and because these tests are pretty much the same let's change this to at test and say something like um, rerun uh, redirects um, back with that or let's see for for a non rerunnable whoops rerunnable shift um, okay let's see so let's tighten this up a little bit I like these to say something along the lines of kind of you know again kind of revealing some of that um, requirements, some of that spe specification. So I don't want to just say redirect back. Uh, let's just say something like uh, rerun redirects and does not rerun for a non-rerunnable uh, shift. Okay, cool. So we're going to arrange this. I'm not going to worry too much about the connection now, so I'm going to back that off. Uh, I do uh, want this to basically be in a state that wouldn't be rerunnable. Now again, my goal is not to test both bits of logic here. I would probably write a model test for that. I really just want to trigger one of those uh, issues. And so we know that this uh, was an issue before uh, when we didn't have the status of held. So I'm going to say something here. Uh, let's see if we have anything Okay, yeah, let's do this ran twice. That's pretty expressive. So we'll say something like, give me an order that's been run twice uh, and create that. We know that we're not going to have that. I shouldn't have to worry about any of this setup here. Uh, so I'm going to take out that carbon stuff because we shouldn't even get that far. Uh, again, I want to do the limited amount of setup uh, because that way if my code does change, something else is going to end up uh, breaking. So uh, we're going to act as still the order user. We're still going to post with all that connection information. In this case, we'll just use the order connection underscore ID. Uh, we shouldn't redirect to the account page. Instead, we should redirect back with some errors. So I'm going to look at that uh, error here in just a second. But let's get this redirection correct. So I'm just going to say it should redirect back to the rerun page. Uh, and what I can do to kind of fake that out is do a from and set the URL. So I'm going to say I came from the rerun page. Whether or not that exists it doesn't really matter. Uh, the framework is just going to attempt to redirect back to that page. And then I also want to get some errors here. So I'm going to say something like response, uh, assert session has, uh, let's see, it has the error, error, <laughs> and it's going to have the data of this template and that order ID. So let's just get all this nice and tidy here. And I'm going to clean that up by just adding in some line breaks. So let's just say it should have template, it should have data, and data should be the order ID. Perfect. All right, let's tidy that up. Great. There we go. And finally, I'm going to say assert not or nothing pushed. Uh, or more specifically, uh, it didn't push the uh, perform job shift. And in that case, I don't need to test for anything else. And we also don't need to test that the order was modified because, again, we just didn't get that low. You might want to test for those types of things, make sure something wasn't changed. Uh, that's not really the goal of this test. The goal of this test is to confirm that we were redirected. You can kind of get yourself uh, down the wrong path of starting to test for all of the negative behavior. So. I tend to, again, just focus on testing for the things related to uh, this particular test case. Uh, so in this case, I want to make sure that I'm redirecting. I want to make sure that it wasn't put back uh, on the queue, right? So there we go. Nothing was pushed or not pushed. Uh, and again, we can tinker with this. You can say something like assert nothing was pushed. Uh, that would obviously be a little more strict. Like not only did we not push the perform job, but nothing else. Uh, so let's run this and see kind of where we land. And good, everything passes. So I'm not going to worry too much about that uh, because uh, we have this test already kind of giving the happy path. And as we move farther and farther along uh, with our test, it just becomes less likely that something in there is broken. Uh, we just get more and more coverage. So let's uh, do the same thing again. Uh, I'm going to copy this former happy path test. Uh, in the interest of time as just a way to now say something like uh, rerun, um, let's see, responds 
responds with um, or when there is a GitLab client exception. Cool. So this is the part I want to test now. So I want to get into here, right? Basically, we're not able to connect to, to GitLab, do the appropriate things, whatever we need to do. Uh, and ultimately, it's going to log an error and redirect uh, back to uh, some page with the requested input. So let's say redirects uh, back when there is a GitLab exception. So, uh, and we could, we could be strict here, does not uh, rerun and redirects back. So we got a nice, very descriptive bit here. So now we want to say GitLab. We want this to be tidied up with the connection. We do want to assert that it's held, so we get past all of that. Again, sticking with our happy path. We won't need this carbon bit, uh, so we can get rid of that. Uh, we are going to keep that connection, so that should be up. We should pass this GitLab bit, and so now what we want to set up is kind of this uh, area here. So we're going to say something here like um, rerun. So let's just say redirect or sorry, from, we're coming from the rerun page, our fictitious rerun page. We're going to assert that we got redirected there. Uh, we're also going to just assert nothing was pushed, just like we did before. And we don't need any of these checks now. And finally, let's also make sure that we have some input in the session. So let's say response, uh, assert session has input. Uh, I wonder what it sets here. So we have flash input. So we have this old input, and it gets an array of all sorts of the data that we want. So let's do that. So I think there might be a cleaner way to say that, though. Let's let's check out this response. Um, let's get a test response, and let's just kind of see here. There's probably a way to say that it redirected back with input. And if there's not, I feel like I'm going to PR that to the framework because that would be kind of helpful. But again, I feel pretty confident this is in here. So let's just say something like input. No, no input. Session has. There's definitely the session has bit. Um, hmm, okay. Let's see if this works by just hard coding it. I don't like the brittleness of this, but again, this is something I might tweak and end up PRing. But just kind of looking at the implementation here, uh, it removes files from the input. Uh, basically, says if inputs null or not null, then pass input. Otherwise, get all of the data. So I'm going to pass it in uh, old input it gets that array, whatever the array we passed in. So in this case, we passed in request input. So that should be this code here. Whoops. That should be this code. And let's, whoops, that's way too much. I just want to copy this array. There we go. So let's attempt to say that everything we passed in uh, was also in the session under this old input. And again, I'd really like to uh, set this up by basically saying something like uh, session input has or something like that. So again, I'll look into PRing that. Uh, but that should all work now. Uh, we got this logging of the error that could happen. Uh, I'll focus on that in just a second. I think what's more important is to actually get this to fire an error. So in order to do that, I need to do some more setup here. So what I'm going to do is this is resolved from the container. So I can actually uh, swap that out with my own mock. So what I'm going to do here is just say something like GitLab uh, client is, whoops, GitLab client is going to be a mock uh, of the GitLab client. And that's just a class. There we go. And I'm going to say GitLab client uh, should receive uh, this add collaborator. Uh, with that, and it should get that with the access token. Uh, so that's going to be connection, whoops, access token, and what else? The repository, repository, whoops, repository. Great. 
And in this case, I'm going to and throw a GitLab exception. And that should trigger this area here, which will ultimately trigger that redirection backwards that I want. So GitLab client exception. Uh, does this allow you to mock one up? Uh, if it is an object, otherwise return a new exception. Great. So I could just say something like class here, and that's all just going to work out. So let's try to run this and kind of see what explodes. We get an exception, uh, undefined mock, my bad here. That's not uh, how it works here. So call to undefined method teachers, or sorry, test feature tests HTTP controllers mock. So even though it's picking that up, um, something about the namespace is a bit off there. So let's try that. Undefined method mock. Why are you being such a burden? This comes in through mockery if it's not defined, but it seems to not be picking it up. So let's do mockery mock, and let's bring that in and see if we can get past this issue. There we go. Uh, so now we get an error 500. So something's significantly broken here. So let's turn off this with exception handling. And instead, we get a 401 unauthorized. Oh, of course, we have set up the mock, but we have not actually injected it into the container. So we need to swap that out. But Laravel actually provides a way for you to do that all in your test. This is actually the confusion I was having just a second ago. So we just say this mock. Uh, this is going to generate a mock for that and automatically swap it out uh, in the uh, container for us. So if we look at this instance, it takes the instance and swaps it out again in the service container. So not only does it give us a mock back, but it handles all the binding for us underneath the covers. So now when we run this again, uh, we're still getting an error, but fortunately it's a new one. Basically that that didn't match up correctly. Uh, and it looks like that's because this is actually a repository object that it gets. Um, so I'm calling it a model, but it's actually my own version uh, of a model. So kind of interesting here. Um, we could write some tests for that to make sure that I got the right one. But honestly, I again, for the purpose of this test, I, I really don't care. Um, I only care that it probably got a repository. So um, I can use a mockery matcher here. Uh, I think there's an instance of, or what is that called? There's something where it's like um, type. Yeah, here we go. I think you can say type of repository class. And so long as it is a type of that class, whatever this second argument is, then everything's going to be okay. So let's run this again. And it doesn't seem to like that as much as I thought it was going to. So let's actually go um, check that out. Uh, let me jump back over here. And we'll say something like um, mockery uh, type, whoops, mockery argument type matcher thought it was type, but maybe it's not. Let's see what type does in here. So the type matcher accepts any string, which can be, okay, so it's a type of resource, uh, is callable. The type matcher can also accept a class or interface name to be used in an instance of, okay. So it says it can be used any type. So what do we have wrong here? So it should receive, let's try to change this to any, just any, mockery any, real quick, and see if we get a little farther down the road. And of course we do. So something's wrong with that type. I'm gonna spend just a second on it real quick to see what might be the issue. So let's put this back. And it's a mockery type. We're including mockery. We have this type, the expected type. It's not an is. So it is a string and it's class. The class exists. Okay. So that should be good. Oh. I see, it's got the wrong repository. Thanks, PHP Storm. 
import the class, import the models repository. There we go. Hey, there we go. Knew it was something. Okay, cool. So I wanted to keep it a little bit tight. Again, we could have used any here, uh, but I like at least having it somewhat strict, even though I'm not super worried that it's exactly that thing. I could have done a complex matcher on there to make sure the two string versions of these exist, but again, that's not what I'm testing right now. If I want to test the happy path of adding collaboration, I would definitely do that there. But my goal here was basically to create the happy um, path and then a couple of the sad paths so I can start on the refactor. So now, armed with these green tests, let's actually go through and refactor some things. So the first thing I don't like and probably what I'm going to focus on for the rest of this video is this try-catch block. I hate try-catch blocks. Uh, they're very noisy syntax to me. They feel very Java-esque. Uh, not only do you have kind of this verbose uh, try catch you know rich syntax but you also introduce an additional nesting layer which is something I talk about in, in base code uh, nested codes just visually complex uh, you have to track kind of each layers of that mental overhead I just don't like it uh, so not only do I have this indentation for the try catch but I also have the indentation of the if block within here so what I would really love to do is actually just have this this would be my goal right so I'm going to go ahead and make this code because this is the code that I want. I'm only going to uh, alter the implementation code at this point, and I'm going to run this test again and we see that it fails. And it fails because basically uh, it threw an exception, but you know nothing was kind of handled. Uh, now that's for two reasons. One, I left this exception handling on in the tests, so I am going to actually pull that out real fast. Uh, and I'm going to run this again, and we should get a, a more specific error. So failed asserting that false is true. This is for the redirection status code. So I know what's going on here. The issue is, is that, of course, we're not uh, returning the proper, ex we're not handling that exception. This is bubbling up, and it's becoming a 500 instead of the response that we want. So in order to fix that, I can go to the GitLab client exception. And it's all set up here, but what I want is to actually leverage what the framework provides for me, which is an automatic calling of the render and report methods. So let me just demonstrate that by jumping out to the docs. So let's just look at exceptions real quick. And if we look at the exception handler, we can see reportable and rendable, renderable uh, exceptions. And so it says instead of type checking your exceptions uh, in your exception handler, or I'll add uh, in a try-catch block of your controllers, you can define a report and render method on your custom exceptions. When they exist, the framework will automatically call them and therefore automatically generate that response. So let's set this up. Public function render it looks like it takes the request, so let's go ahead and bring that in. And I'm going to paste the body of that try-catch block here. Let's format everything so life looks a little better. And look at that, everything's already lined up. Uh, so just missing a few imports here, let's fix the facade class to dump that into. And we'll fix the models class as well to bring in that connection for GitLab. And now we have everything we had before. Uh, so the request is coming in, that's fine. It's not type hinted, but that's okay. Uh, I know that that's the correct request object. And here, uh, instead of referencing the exception we used to get in the catch block, uh, I can say this dot get code uh, instead because we're within the exception class and have access to that code. Uh, so let's run our test. And we're back to passing. So successful refactor. That was pretty awesome. Look how we basically cleaned up uh, even more of this code. It all kind of fits on my screen now. Uh, even though it wasn't necessarily a super long block of code, that nesting just really kind of annoyed me. Uh, we can keep pushing uh, to leverage things like this, uh, as well as possibly even this verify by moving that into some middleware. Uh, so now we're focused strictly on the business logic of, you know, updating that order, putting it back on the queue for rerun. So uh, everything is kind of being handled here, and the rest of this gets pushed off elsewhere in the code. But we're driving that through the tests. And again, notice that once I was armed with the tests, you know, I wrote those first. I didn't try to change any of the code. I wrote the tests first in isolation, made sure everything was passing. Then I switched gears, changed hats to the refactoring mode, 
only changed the implementation. That gave me confidence that my tests you know, were unchanged. They were all green and running before. And if I did a true successful refactor, we should see that they're all green still. So that's everything in a nutshell. Uh, you know, again, I'm going to continue to add more paths here. I'll clean up uh, some of those other bits. And also, I think uh, there might be an opportunity to, again, turn this into some kind of a little more uh, descriptive thing. So it's not so brittle and tied to the actual framework. Um, I have to kind of reach in and know that underscore old input uh, is what I want to check uh, in the session. So definitely uh, look for that in a future PR, hopefully, and uh, thanks.